Good evening, Titans. This is Mr. Simpson, and uh, we're starting a new chapter now, chapter 3, and this is lesson 3.1, and it's titled Functions. And if you look in your student journal, there'll be a page where we talk about vocabulary, and there'll be a, six definitions that we'll define throughout this video tonight. And so the first one is a relation. And a relation pairs inputs with outputs. Right? Or it pairs an X value with a Y value. Uh, a relation can also just be defined as any set of ordered pairs. Now, a function is a special type of relation that pairs each input with exactly one output. And as we go through some examples here, you'll understand these definitions more clearly. So we're first asked to determine whether each relation is a function. Now first of all, all of these are relations. Okay, Any pairing of an x to a y or an input to an output. So to determine if it's a function, remember what a function was. If we go back just a moment, a function is a relation that pairs each input with exactly one output. So if we look at letter A, I know that negative 2 goes with 2, negative 1 goes with 2, 0 with 2, 1 with 0, and 2 with 0. And if you look at that, none of the x values repeat. Therefore, each input is paired with a different output. So this is a function. Now, letter B. If you notice, 4 is paired with 0, but 4 is also paired with 3. Since 4 is paired with two different y values, that is not a function. Letter C. If you notice the input values, the 0 is twice. The 0 is paired with a 5 and the 0 is also paired with a 6. So again this is not a function. Now in this case the input of x, negative 1 goes to 4, 3 goes to 15, and 11 goes to 15. Now I can have the same x value or input paired with one output value but I can't have the same input paired with two different outputs. To really make this simple, when you're trying to determine if a relation is a function, if we simply just look to see if x repeats. So that's what I have written here, is if an input or an x value repeats, then the relation is not a function. So Now I'd like you to pause this for a moment. And you try. All right. So if we take a look here, if you notice in number one, the fives repeat. The five goes to zero. The five also pairs with ten. So this is not a function. Here, none of the x values repeat. So yes, that is a function. Here, again, none of those repeat. So this is yes, it's a function. But in this case, the same input is paired with three different. So if we were to do order of pairs, we'd have one half comma negative two, we'd have one half comma zero, we'd have one half comma four, which means the x value is repeating two different y values. So this is not a function. All right. Now, another way to determine if a relation is a function is if we have a graph and it's a vertical line test. So again, remember a graph is found by using ordered pairs or plugging in inputs and getting outputs. So the vertical line test says a graph represents a function when no vertical line passes through in more than one point. So if you look at this first one, this is a function 
but here this one is not. And again, the vertical line goes up and down, crosses it in two places. Here, any vertical line would only cross it in one spot. So we determine whether the each graph represents a function. Well, if I look here, when I draw this vertical line, it would pass through those two points. Since it passes through those two points, here's another vertical line that would pass through those two points. This is not a function. This one, any vertical line I draw, only passes through the graph in one spot. So this is a yes. Now you try. All right, this first one would be a yes. The second one would be a yes. This would be a no. And this one would be a yes. All right, now here's two more definitions. All right, the domain of a function is a set of all possible inputs. So if you look at this graphic here, and this is called a function, the input goes in to the function, I perform some function to it, and what comes out is the output. Now typically the domain are the x values and the range or the outputs are the y values. Again, let's pause this, make sure you get these written down in your notes. Find the domain and range. So the domain, as I said, are usually the x values. So we have one, two, three, four points here. So the domain would be all the x values. So it's negative three, negative one, one, and three. Those are my domain values. My range values are the y values. So it starts at a negative two, then goes to zero, two, and a four. Now, in letter B, since this is a solid line, I have to call it as an interval. So my domain values would be from a negative two, less than or equal to x, is less than or equal to three. And my range values, which would go from a negative one, less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 2. And again, the reason it's less than or equal to is because the endpoints are both colored in. So now, pause again, and you try. Well, for number 9 here, we have, again, just points. So instead of an interval, we're just going to name each one. So I have my x values are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And again, those are my domain values. And my range values would be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, oops, sorry, negative 4, ah, just messed that up. Sorry, guys. So if I look at my range values, the lowest value is 0, then I have two, and it occurs twice, but I don't have to write it down twice, and then I have four, all right? So again, sorry about that, but the range should have been zero, two, and four. And then for number 10, the domain, again, it goes from one to five, so one is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to five. And my range, which goes from zero to four, so it's 0 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 4. All right, so now the function y equals negative 3x plus 12 represents the amount y in fluid ounces of juice remaining in a bottle after you take x gulps. Identify the independent and dependent variables. So here are the last two definitions I want you to put in your notes. And so first, an independent variable is the input value of the function. It's the independent variable is called the independent variable because we usually get to choose the value that we're plugging in. 
And so if we're choosing what we're plugging in, then it's independent. Now, the dependent variable is the output value because it depends on the value chosen for the input. Now here, they tell us what our domain is. And the domain is actually, in this case, the independent value or the independent variable. So the range, well, the range, if I plug in 0, negative 3 times 0 plus 12 would be 12. If I plug 1 in, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 12 is 9. If I plug 2 in, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 plus 12 is 6. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9 plus 12 is 3. And then four, negative 3 times 4 is negative 12 plus 12 is 0. And that's my range. Okay. So, again, the independent is the number of gulps. And then the dependent would be the ounces remaining. And now I'd like you to try this. So again, here it gives you a function. You have to identify the independent and dependent variables. And then find the range given the domain. So again, here it says the function a equals negative 4b plus 14 represents the number a of avocados you have left after making b batches of guacamole. So the b Okay, is the number of batches and that's going to be our independent variable and then our dependent variable is dependent on the number of avocados we have left. Okay, And if we plug in these we get 14, we would get 10, we get 6, and then we get 2 as our range values. All right. No, that's a little bit long today, but there's a lot of information in this lesson. So uh, again, make sure you got all that in your notes. If you have to rewind it at all, please make sure you do that. And uh, I'll be checking for your six definitions that we went over, and then also some of the examples. Have a great evening.